All right, so this is a screencast on transcription. What we're going to look at in this particular screencast is how DNA passes on its message uh, to mRNA in the nucleus and the importance of that particular event because we don't want DNA leaving the nucleus. We want it staying there. We want it protected. It is the uh, blueprint for life. It tells our body how to make proteins, but we all know that protein isn't made in the nucleus. Protein is made in the, on the ribosomes out in the cytoplasm or on the endoplasmic reticulum. So we need a way for uh, the DNA message to get from the nucleus out to the ribosomes without DNA actually taking it there. So mRNA is going to be that handy messenger that takes that message from the nucleus out to the ribosomes uh, where it can then be translated through translation, obviously, to assemble amino acids and make protein. So why don't we want DNA leaving the nucleus? Well, it has our genetic code. It has the blueprint to make proteins. We don't want to risk damage. We don't want to, to risk um, denaturation uh, via leaving the nucleus, via breakdown in the cytoplasm. We want it staying there protected, wrapped up. Um, mRNA is going to do the work for us. So we're going to see how that works out. We're going to see how mRNA reads the code, uh, etc. So let's look at that. Let's look at how uh, DNA is opened up, etc. This is uh, a double strand of DNA. You're going to see here uh, the blue is the transcription unit. This is the segment of DNA that we want transcribed. The lower segment is what is actually going to be transcribed. This is the template. All right. Upstream from that transcription unit is a promoter. This is going to be really important. This is going to kind of tell our enzyme where it needs to land and where it needs to start transcribing. So here's our template. What's going to get transcribed? Upstream is where the action is going to start. It's going to move downstream and start transcribing the DNA. So here, um, we're going to be opening up the, the, the DNA double helix, but we're going to start up here upstream. And here specifically at the TATA -ta box. Okay? TATA, -T -A, and then a couple more A's, is actually on the non template strand. You can see it up here. On the template strand, it goes ATAT, -A -T, and then a couple of T's. But this is going to kind of put out a beacon, and it's going to say, all right, uh, this is where these particular proteins called transcription factors need to land. And once they land at this TATA -ta box, they're going to put out the bat signal. They're going to say, okay, RNA polymerase, in particular RNA polymerase 2, this is where you need to land. This is where you need to start your upward streaming, and you're going to find your transcription unit. And we're going to watch a, um, an animation on this uh, in the next slide where it's going to hopefully make a little bit more sense. So. The transcription factors are going to land at the TATA -ta box. They're going to assemble what's going to be called a transcription complex. They're going to tell RNA polymerase where to land. Here's some more of these transcription factors that have assembled. Um, and then those combined with RNA polymerase to form the transcription complex. They start moving upstream. They open up the DNA. Okay. Uh, and they start bringing in RNA nucleotides. Wherever there's an A, however, they're not going to bring in a T, they're going to bring in a uracil. We've talked about this uh, because thymine doesn't exist in the RNA language. So, um, hopefully to make this a little bit more clear, let's look at this animation. Alright, so we're first going to look at some of the mechanisms that are required for uh, transcription to occur. And this is a pretty cool animation that I found uh, that spells it out quite clearly for us. So uh, we talked about the transcription unit. We need to look at what's upstream from it. And what are we going to need? Well, obviously it is, it's an energetic process. Uh, we're going to make a transcript out of DNA. We're going to turn it into RNA. So there's our DNA, our transcription unit, there's our transcription factors that we need to assemble. RNA polymerase is the enzyme that carries it out, and ATP is going to provide the energy. This is the transcription unit of DNA that we're going to transcribe. Let's go upstream a little bit, um, and we're going to find our promoter region. There's the TATA -ta box, and upstream a little bit more from that is an enhancer region, which 
uh, isn't really going to come into play for our discussion today, but it would later on if we're talking about operons. There's our first transcription factor, which is going to land at the ta, -ta box, trans transcription factor 2D. It's going to land with the help of a, a protein called TBP. Lands there, and like we said, it sends out kind of a beacon that says, all right, RNA polymerase, here's where we need to go. In come a couple more transcription factors, TF2A and TF2B. They start the beginning of this transcription complex. <clears throat> There's our RNA polymerase. Landing on our transcription unit. We finish the assembly of our transcription factor with a few more transcription, uh, our, excuse me, our transcription complex with a few more transcription factors being assembled. Here's our ATP coming in. It's going to drop off some phosphates, add some energy, and now we can go. And now we see this bubble opening up. And just as DNA polymerase did in DNA replication, DNA polymerase reads 3 to 5, right? It adds 5 to 3. So does RNA polymerase. Reads in the same direction, right? Nothing's changed there. This is our mRNA, our, our immature, our pre-mRNA strand being created and kind of flowing out the side. So we're transcribing this DNA language into mRNA language now. And this is going to occur all the way along the transcription unit until it gets to the end where our RNA polymerase is going to drop off and it's going to leave our pre-mRNA here. That is the DNA language transcribed now in mRNA. Now we're not done. Okay, That does have a, a, a similar code to our DNA template, but we need to do some some more things to it. Okay, we need to do some more things to it. Let's look at that. What do we need to do? Well, here's where we are. We have this pre-mRNA which we've transcribed from our uh, termination unit, or excuse me, from our transcription unit. I'm sorry. Now, built into DNA are these non-coding regions. Okay, this so-called junk DNA. Um, and they're called introns. Now, the RNA polymerase still coded those. It still transcribed those. So they're still here. But they aren't going to be used to make protein. So it's kind of a waste. So what we need to do is we need to splice them out. We need to get rid of the introns, these lightly colored pieces. Okay, we need to splice out the introns. And we need to connect the exons together. So these proteins called spliceosomes are going to come in. They're going to loop out. They're going to splice out these introns. They're going to connect the exons together. And we're going to get a mature uh, mRNA strand. Not before we also protect the 5' prime end because movement out in the cytoplasm is a dangerous proposal. Okay, We need to, to uh, protect the 5' prime end from degradation. We need to add a 5' prime cap which is a modified guanine, so we'll put a 5' prime cap here on the 5' prime end. And we need to protect the 3' prime end with a poly A tail with a whole bunch of kind of non-coding um, adenines. We're going to protect that end from degradation as well. So what did we do? We spliced out the introns. We spliced together the exons. They're called exons because they're going to get expressed. All right. We, protect, we uh, protected the 5' prime end with a cap, the 3' prime end with a poly A tail, and now we have a mature mRNA ready to leave the nucleus, go out to the ribosomes, meet up with tRNA for translation. And that's transcription.